Hello, hi everybody. It's another Live Again series. Whew, today I went out, I was racing home like every time I go out on a Live Again series day, I'm always making sure that I come back before the Live Again series. And today I had to really race. Hello, hi Christian, good evening, hi Abiola, good evening. It's an amazing time for the Live Again series, and I'm super excited. Hello, Madam Okpe. Good to see you all. I think my guest is here, so let me bring her up. Hi, Tashan Benjamin. Hi. Hi. hi, sis. Good evening. Hi, hi, hi. Fresh hi, as sis. always. Any for me. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. This IG live is destined to happen. Let me just leave it like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yes. Wow. Good evening. Good How are you doing evening. today? Um, well. Okay. Good well. evening, everyone, especially those who are seeing my face for the first time. My name is Eni Fome. And I'm the founder of the Live Again movement. We help broken, abused, and distressed women live again. And this series really just features resilient women, women who have gone through adversity and come out on top of it stronger. Because not everybody goes through adversity and survives. In fact, not everybody goes through adversity and begins to thrive. A lot of people are buried with the adversity. And so this series just um, seeks to celebrate such women, number one. And number two, um, just get practical steps and wisdom from their journeys for those who may be going through the same or similar experiences. So tonight I have the one and only Jacqueline Oludimu. She is the founder of two faith-based initiatives, the Happy Ever After Hub and God's Prepared Singles Hub. She's an author of, I think, three books. I thought it was two, but I, I, I think it's three. Three books. Six. Yeah. Six books. Oh, six. The ones I know is Grace Junkie and Marriage on Purpose. Let me not just go and try myself. <laughs> but she's an author of six books, right? And she's one lady that is, you know, she was actually marked by the enemy for her life to be ruined. But God's grace did not permit. From somebody who the enemy wanted to waste to somebody who is now in a marriage on purpose, where God is using her to save many marriages, is another mystery. <laughs> but it's a classic case, like I said in my, in my profile, of a woman living again as God turned the mess the enemy created into a message. And today she is living. I mean, she's known as the marriage evangelist. She's a Christian life coach, certified, save your marriage before it starts. That's sin -based right? Pre-marriage facilitator and counselor. She uses her before you say I do pre-marriage program to give engaged couples a personalized preparation to start their marriage strong and thrive. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me make welcome. Jackie! Thank I mean, no, you. Jacqueline. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. Thank you I'm so sure much. they call you Jackie sometimes oh, yeah. where you are. <laughs> exactly, yeah. because yeah. it's similar. <laughs> yes very similar okay so we're gonna go straight to um the questions for the day the first question i want to ask you today is what does the term live again to you because you know your story is a story of somebody who, who was on the other side right on the other side almost just missing it i mean i'm sure that you have you've been you've been in the place of merely existing before and and then you began to live again so what does what does it mean to you? What does the term "live again" mean when you hear it? So the term and thank you, and if I'm well done and the work you're doing, thank you. I love thank the you. work you're doing, particularly for women. Thank um, you so much. Particularly for women who may not be in great marriages mm. and you know have to find a home to live in. That mm. work has my heart, and just as I was getting ready, the Holy Spirit was reminding me that I owe that work something. So I'm just grateful that you're doing it. It's it's a work that I also had conceived many years ago, mm. just giving women, and not just women, even men, you know, mm. the opportunity to live again, despite what life has thrown at them. So mm. well done. 
The Lord bless you. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, it's interesting. I was really thinking about you a lot today, but yeah, um, well done. Um, <laughs> Thank you. What does live again mean to me? Live again mm. means living the life that God has ordained for me. Mm. That's what live again means to me. Living the life that God has ordained for me despite all odds. That's what mm. live again means. And I want to... I want to anchor it on the scripture that God gave me when I started, um, when he called me to ministry. The scripture is Ephesians 2 verse 10. Mm. Yeah, God's workmanship. If you look at it, you understand mm. that even if your life looks good, you know, <laughs> you haven't started living really until you start walking in the path that God has ordained for you. Yes. Honestly, live again. Is for every woman, you know, to be living in the ordained path of God for us. Wow. You know, you, you know that whether or not life has happened to us, we came into this world already with a label. Mm. And until, until we embrace what Ephesians 2.10 says, you know, I'll read it in many versions mm. so that we understand it. It says, for we are God's own handiwork. Mm. This is Amplified. Mm. created recreated in jesus christ so it means mm. that we all came living quote and unquote you know created but to live again is to be recreated in jesus christ but don't just stop there don't stop there don't stop there that you we may do those good works which god predestined which god planned beforehand, beforehand. for mm. us Amplified mm. says, taking part, the way, you know, taking the path, the path, P-A-T-H, which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life, mm. which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Oh, yeah. Even if, you are, and I don't know why, but let me go on. Even if you are in a marriage or in a life that looks good, mm. nothing is pinching you. I beg you to take a moment to say, am I living in the path that God, who allowed me to be, allowed my pregnancy not to go away? Am I living in the path that he ordained for me? Number one. Number two. Am I doing the good works that he predestined for me? Mm. So that's what live again means for me. That's what live wow. again means for me. That's so powerful. <laughs> like, like it is, there's a lot there because, you know, there is ambition. There is my own desire. There's what I want to do, you know. For me, when life knocked me down, I realized that I, that I'd gotten to the end of my rope. Because you know, civil engineering, you study civil engineering, you tend to want to be analytical. That's what I studied. You want to plan your life, you want to control your things, you want to for me, I thought I had gotten it all figured out. And when life knocked me down, I lost everything. There was nothing to there was nothing to stand on. I had to now go to God and die on the altar and that's when i began to live again so there was a life i had planned there was a life god had planned that's i knew right. nothing about the life god had planned that's in right. my mind i was living my life so this is spot on yeah. there are so many people that think they are living their yeah. lives they think they are okay they yeah. think like you know i'm doing well now why do i need to even live again like yeah. i beg you what is all this live again people yeah. are stressing me Absolutely. No, there is a work. There is a life. Like you said, the life is before the work. Yeah. And if you don't enter that life, you cannot even do the work. Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's profound. Mm. It's profound. Because mm. I, there's a particular thing I always say about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. That if Joseph had settled for Potiphar's wife, which is what existing is, he would never have known what it felt like to be the prime minister. That's what living, truly living is. Living again. Because 
Potiphar's wife was a comfort zone, was, you know, you are the you are guy here, you are the everything here. Okay. And there is a life God has preordained for you. I mean, she has said it all. Okay. It's something to think about and ponder on. And I really like um, what you have released here tonight. The next question, have you ever been knocked down by life? At any time I ask this question, I know the answer that there's no human being that has not been knocked down at least once. <laughs> but... um. Are there practical steps that you took to begin to live again or to bounce back? But obviously, talk about how you were knocked down by life and then the practical steps that you took to, to begin to live again and to bounce back. So I, yes, I have. That's the mm. answer. You know, I have. And I think the story that has come to mind to share tonight, because um, I've been thinking a lot about from the very first time you asked me to come, you know, there was a particular part of my journey that God was saying, you know, this is really the one that counts mm. um, or that matters to this conversation. Whilst, you know, I had um, uh, a very targeted childhood, that's what I would call it. And I, and, I, mm. and I say that because sitting, reviewing my life now, I realized that everything is either the enemy planning mm. to get in the way of God's plan and purpose for mm. our lives or about our lives. Um, and if we don't, if we're not aware and we don't position aware. ourselves to avoid mm. that, um, it's dangerous. So already i think that the enemy thought he had won when i was 15 mm. and had to go through all of those um, abominations i think i wrote a book about it so i'm not really going into those details but i think the, because again at that time it wasn't anything that broke me in any way i was just a young teenage girl i didn't even know what i was doing quote and unquote you know but i think the one that really stands out is the fact that i I had booked and you know planned uh, a wedding with a gentleman and we had picked a date um we had told the church we had been enrolled for pre-marriage counseling wow <laughs> i had left the united kingdom you know after my in fact i had not finished my masters so i had done my masters i had done the taught part of it and so i was now writing the dissertation and my mother had said since you haven't been able to get a job you know can you come back home I will get you a job, you know, and you can continue your relationship with this gentleman who's been coming to see us, you know, in your absence. And I said, okay. I mean, it made sense because I was paying rent in the UK. I didn't have a job. I was just doing my normal mm -hmm. student job. But that was, it, was, it, it made sense. You know, I'd gone for a few roles and, the, you know, I wasn't getting them. And so I went back home and it made sense because the gentleman is back home. What well, was back home? So I did go home and... When I got home, I think I got home January, February, Valentine's Day, he took me to this restaurant and um, I had had my main meal and then it was ice cream time, it was dessert time. So I put a spoon of my ice cream in my mouth and I'm being honest here. And my, I popped out a ring from my mouth because there was a ring hiding in the ice cream. And I'm like, what is this? And then he goes on his knees and he says, oh, will you marry me? And I looked at him and of of course, it was in a restaurant, one of those foolish things that I now teach against, you know, the pressure of everyone in the room. Oh, say yes, say yes. yes. Oh, you know, yes. And, <laughs> like. yeah, oh, yes. Oh, I teach, I teach against that because I feel like a proposal is a very private thing. Um, I feel like it's something that you don't spring on someone, you know, yeah. in the public. To be thought through. Yeah, if you do it in the public, let it be that you've had conversations that have clearly shown that this is the path we're going, you know? Mm. Anyway. So mm. he did that and I said, yes, you know, and yeah, we started planning and we did all of that only for me to realize that he was not the man for me. Um, it was quite painful. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you the details so that you understand how mighty it was for me. So I had been in this relationship. We had been trying to keep ourselves, you know, he was um, a head usher. I was a Sunday school teacher in the mm. Redeemed Church that we were attending. And uh, I realized one day, because the Lord started giving me dreams and, you know, impressions about him. Um, and I realized one day that he had, he was hiding something, hmm. but I didn't pay too much attention. 
one day I was waiting for my staff boss at Sheeta. Anyone who's a Nigerian knows Sheeta roundabout. It's really, it's really <laughs> And I was waiting for my staff boss to pick me up. And this is about 6.30, 6.45 a.m. ish. Oh, my mama is here. <laughs> One of my big mentors is here. Thy precious jewels. Good evening, ma. I love you, ma. <laughs> um, one of my big mentors. Um, so, yes, I was standing there waiting for the staff bus. And lo and behold, I saw my fiancé driving a, another woman to the other bus stop after where I was standing. Wow. And I, I was, you know how you're just like, it didn't make sense. Like, where is she going to? Who's the woman in the car? You know, what's happening here? I was just standing at the bus stop. Can you imagine early morning going to work, you know? Hmm. And then he turned back, dropped her, turned back, and drove back to the way to his house. And I thought, okay. So I went to work, and of course, I was restless at work. I was shaking on the staff bus. It didn't make sense. I knew something was wrong. I mean, if a man is dropping a woman off that early, where are they coming mm. from? Like Jackie V, mm. you know? <laughs> where are they coming anyway, from? <laughs> I went to work. I couldn't stay at work, trust me. Any for me, I took a bike from Adjose Adogun, where my company, where I was working was. That's all the way yeah. to his house in Aguda. What? You know, because I just wow. wanted to go and have the conversation. Like, what did I see today? What happened? Now, this was me, maybe a few weeks back, I had had a dream that I went to visit him. And that I got into his house and I saw many bags, female bags and shoes. But that when I got in and I looked at them, they were not my bags and my shoes. You know, the Lord had clearly given me a dream about that. Um, of course, we prayed. I thought about it. And I thought, mm, what does this mean? So then that happened. And then, of course, I became restless. Because by the time I had the conversation, I was like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, I got to his house that day. He wasn't home, but I could see a female sleeper by the entrance anyways that was another sign but um i think i was in love foolishly i wasn't lost let's just be clear mm. Mm. you know um because love doesn't make us blind mm. <laughs> it doesn't make us blind in that sense yes. when you see a red flag it's a red flag you know mm. um so but anyways one day he was he called me and said oh hello i um he normally calls me every morning to check on me and you know so that day he called as i was getting ready to go to work and he said oh i'm on my way to the airport i'm taking my this my friend who came over for the weekend from abuja i'm taking him to the airport so this that was his friend the gentleman i knew all right okay so he was taking his friend email to the airport that early so he was just telling me that oh i'm in the car with so 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 and i'm going to, i'm going to drop him at the airport mm. blah 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 and for some reason we finished all like you know pleasantries or oh, have a nice day and this gentleman did not hang up <laughs> He didn't hang up and so on the phone he was telling um his friend that that's why i was telling so so imagine that he was so he was saying that's why i was telling any for me that any for me should stop you know chasing all these girls in church so assuming that any for me is a man as an example to so stop chasing all these girls in church and that even if he's going to chase the girls into church he should not do it around church he should take them to hotels that are far away you know from the church and all of that now look at me now. So he was referring to himself. Now look at me now. <laughs> I'm happy I can laugh about it now. Look at me now. I have a phone where I call all those my girls to come and meet me. And Jackie doesn't know that I have a third phone. She doesn't even know anything about it. I'm telling you that the call had ended between both of us. But somehow this gentleman, maybe because he was driving, <laughs> He didn't hang up properly, and I was just hearing all of these things. Every time I say this, and I'm always busting with joy, <laughs> you know, because it is just the deliverance of God. Honestly. It is the grace of God. It is the mercy of Honestly. God. Almost, almost like Jackie, you're not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it, Jackie. You're going to live the life I destined for you. That's all I see. And that's why I'm telling everyone this story. Because honestly, my life did come to a stop at that point. I don't know if you know what it means to be a Sunday school teacher in a provincial headquarters, just so we're clear, you know. Um, and I also was a teenager's teacher. I had just come back from the UK. Like, I had my life really pretty, pretty beautiful. Um, to be with this gentleman, only to be disappointed in this way, not just to be, you know, heartbroken, but to have made a mockery of me, you know, and I can go on and on. My life did stop. <laughs> I remember that I was angry. I was bitter. I was revengeful. I went to tell everyone who wanted to listen. This guy did. This. I remember. Ah, uh -uh. you know, and I remember going to cry in my friend's house for days. I was really broken. 
I, I also got pained. I was really pained because I left the UK where men were asking to go out with me. And I kept on saying no to every man for the 18 months that I was in the UK because there was a man in Nigeria. Oh. Like total betrayal, total, I don't even know. But you know, any for me, what really gets me about this is the hand of God. And I see that hand of God in many ways in the lives of women. Sometimes it's that a man beats you one, two times. You are able to still get out of that damage. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying divorce, but to separate yourself mm -hmm. out of that damage before it becomes a rest in peace matter. Yes. I feel like it's the hand of God. Yes. I feel like it's the hand of God when you also have been through a situation that ideally you should never come back from it. Mm. And you see yourself coming back mm. from it. I feel like it's the hand of God when someone like me, who ideally, if the world was going to judge, should probably not have children. Yep. It should be labeled on it that this is your consequences for the mm. life you lived or for whatever mm. it is you did with your youth. Should not have children, but I have children. It's the hand of God. Do you mm. see? It's the hand of God that maybe someone like me should not have a marriage that would be blissful not to now talk of purposeful do you see mm. it is the hand of god that i eventually went through those tunnels and i knew for me i i don't know if you know <laughs> um but um i was ashamed i had to leave the church mm. you know because of course we had to go and say please we're canceling the wedding dates we picked um please we're canceling the pre-marriage um you know counseling that has been booked for us um i had to leave the church people already knew we we're gonna get married it was a shame. And I moved back to my mom's church. And I'm trying to, I quickly went and took myself back now so that I can begin to share how I overcame that. Hmm. I went back to my parents' church. I went to NYSC. That was where I learned, where I joined the, that church. I naturally was a Baptist. But that was where I joined the church. And I loved it. They have grown me. I did Bible college there. I did um, school of discipleship there. You know, SOD. So I, my spiritual life was growing in RCCG. I love you. I don't regret that journey. You know, but I had to take a break away from that because I needed to heal. Yes. I was messed up. I Healed. was ashamed, you know. So mm. I, took a, I, took space, I took time, left the church for three months, resigned from all my serving and all of that. And I went to take care of myself. And my mother, I love her. God bless her. She was very happy to have me back. I'm like, I wonder why you left church or our church anyway. She, you wanted to go to, you know. But she was happy to have me back, supported me through that time. She knew it was really bad, you know. And I had friends as well who were really just like, I beg, he's not yours. If he was mm. yours, he wouldn't mess up. Thank God. I know those friends that will be like, we already knew that that guy was not the one. Just see his long mm. legs. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. But thank God for those people in your circle who are for you. I think that also helped me mm. as well. But you know the biggest part, any for me, was that the moment that I, I healed and I got over that, you know, not just by, by going away, I did that by praying. I now did that also by learning what I should have been looking for, you mm. know, when I was trying to choose someone to be with. Mm. Mm. My mother will always say that a spouse is something you choose or someone you choose. It doesn't just have to be what comes your way. Mm. She always says that thing. You make a choice. And so you open mm. your eyes and you make a choice. So what I did was I now went to learn. So in those days, Pastor Kingsley used to have these videos, um, audio videos. I can't remember how we used, but we used to download them. It was MB player, whatever. We used to download mm. them. And then he had one particular one, how to know seven bad guys or seven ways to know a bad guy, something like that. And he had a lot, him and Pastor Mildred. Mildred. And I would download and I would plug it in in the office, you know, my way in the staff bus. Then I even began to share with my colleagues at work. You know, I became the person who was not saying, ah, this don't do, hey, if, if anybody's going to have a boyfriend, I'd be like, hey, run. Or, yo, that's good, you know. <laughs> yes, apparently, you know. And, um, and, you know, looking at this time, any for me, this is a lady who had returned to engagement rings before that one. So this was my third engagement third ring. One that mm. I was saying, no, I'm not doing this, you know. <sighs> but I, I did get over it. But I realized that all of those things was, when the devil failed at 15, you know, or every other thing he did was to make sure I was ending up in the wrong relationships so that I never get to live this life that mm. God predestined for me. And mm. so this is where I am today, where God, by his hand, and also me aligning one step after the 
the other, saying, God, I'd, have, I'd rather have who you have for me. Even though it doesn't look like what I want, I don't even have a list. I remember that's what I mean. I teach that in my singles mentoring hub. I don't even have a list. I just want the one you have for me mm. so that I can live the life that you have planned for me. Mm. So, and that's, wow. and that's where we are today, to the glory of God. Who? And I did go back to that church, just so you know. I did go back. And that's where my husband married me from. I mean, I was serving up until the time that I eventually, you know, got married and I left, you know. Um, so yeah, I went back after I healed. And that's, that's it again. I went back to leave again because I had a calling. I was teaching the teenagers there. I mean, gosh, that's even that story entirely. God was using me, was blessing, was blessing them with me, just sharing my vulnerability and just getting them on the right path, knowing what I had been through as a teenager, if you see what I mean. For those who have read my book, Grace Junkie, you would understand what. So God was using me. The enemy just always wants to get in the way of the bigger yes. picture. Yes. Always, every time. So, but I think that I got to that point where I said, okay, it's time to go back. And I went back to my Sunday school teaching. It's, it's, it's interesting that those are the things that God used to train me, knowing that he had an evangelist or a preacher right. or a minister, mm. you know, in me. And this is it. I'm here living again, living the life that he has destined for me. Oh, wow. wow. Such a powerful story. It's so, it's so powerful. It's so relatable. It's so real. You know, when you were speaking, hmm, <laughs> there's a friend of mine that is in her, her 40s, yeah, and we had, we had lost contact. So we came back and we gained contact again. And the Lord led me to her office and we had a, it was just a beautiful time in God's presence. And when I was speaking with her, one of the things that God told me to tell her is that she's not married because of the mercy of God. It's, it's strange, like, you're in your 40s. Somebody will be questioning, that, uh -uh, God, when, God, why, God, what? She, had gone, she has met a lot of, you know, people like this that you just mentioned. And God has delivered her back to back to back to back. It's actually the mercy of God when God saves a person from a, a, a trap, like a trap that will make you never fulfill your purpose it's, it's 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 the mercy of god so i can really relate with that story and then when you said you had to leave that environment i think what some people do sometimes and and this happened to me when i was having offense my pastor had done something i felt i didn't like the way he managed it and um um funny enough it was i was i was in a relationship with my pastor's brother right and, and this this man had pursued me from america when i was in school he was on my case and I finally started saying hello to him and we started talking and everything. Next, he said he wanted to marry me, he wanted to this and this and this. So everybody knew in church. And then the next thing, this guy comes to Nigeria and begins to, um, like, he's, he's begins to have interest. And I don't even know how to explain it. Like, he went to go and have an introduction for another woman. And my pastor was, was away. So I felt, ah, but I'm a worker in this church. Am I invisible? As people say, am I a breeze? Am I a fan? Am I, like, at least I'm here. So I kind of felt like that wasn't good because I was serving in church. And if for anything, they should have called me to say, oh, um, this is what happened. This is what happened, you know. So I was serving in church, but I was serving in bitterness. I was serving in offense. And when the man that looked like the man now came, I say looked like the man came, I felt like, ah, let me leave church. Let me do this. Let's serve another day. But I see where serving in bitterness can even be a tool serving in offense i see where offense can even be a tool i imagine if you had stayed there and you were serving with anger with bitterness with resentment i imagine what would have i don't think you would be living again today i don't even think you would have you would have been able to heal i think you would have had yeah. a form of oh that's that's jacqueline the sunday school teacher you would have had status and everything achievements but you would have been empty so i yeah. think what i can pick from that part is sometimes it's okay to leave the environment that hurts you it's, oh, it's okay oh please by all means and that's that was why i gave the example of even women who are in abusive marriages you know yeah. um i want you to know that it's okay to separate yourself physically from that violent yes. abusive 
marriage or environment until the other person gets help yes. until the other person realizes that this is not the way to treat a woman more importantly my wife you know until then it's okay to separate yourself and love each other from a distance yes. pray for each other yes. from a distance and parent from a distance your life remember this bible verse i read ephesians 2 verse 10 it is not for the wife or the one who is in husband's house it is for every one of us do yes. you see what i mean it's for everybody yes. that we have a life that has been predestined and nothing should get in the way in the of way that of god yeah I, I, I mean that i just had to write it like leave the environment don't stay in an environment you know where somebody hurts you you can see the person people will be going they'll be seeing the person every day they'll be you know because it's also a hard that posture you know it's, your heart is very critical in what happens to you the bible says out of the heart what the abundance you, it, your heart is the is a place that if it's not okay i'm not sure so yes. much can happen to you and you know this yes. you know so it's, it's, yes. it's, it's, it's important that if you are in a place where it looks like your life is being squeezed squeezed mm. out and sometimes we we may have been that pressure environment for instance you're in a job and it's you know sometimes it may be pruning that's happening but where mm. it looks like you are you're, you're living a life that about to rob you of the life that you're meant to have then you should leave that place you because should. then you'll be what you're doing is to see to it that the plan of god the path that god has ordained for you you know um comes to pass it's very I, left, pass. I did leave it was good for me it was i, I needed the fresh air and i needed to it breathe was. i needed it to definitely heal. Was. i needed the courage to go back because i was i was i needed everything and so it's okay to pull back to now go back yes you know, it's important yes. yeah and that's, the, that's a process fast, and a fast. formula yeah that's a formula for living again it's, it's, you know it's, it's okay to pause big formula. it's okay to go under let everybody not even see you just be go under yes let the Lord do the work and then come back. It's, it's retreat that's yes absolutely. retreat yeah. retreat yeah. because that's god right. wants to heal you god wants to fill you up god wants to go and heal those parts that are wounded you can retreat it could be i always tell my women Go for a three-day retreat. Go for, even if you're married. Because sometimes, funny enough, we have a lot of women that we've been able to help their marriages that come, I want to of leave, course. I want to this, I want to of this. Course. How long have you, why of do you course. want to leave? When I ask that question, why do you want to leave? When we now dig and dig and dig, we now realize that sometimes it is not even what the perceived problem is that is the problem. And then go for a retreat. Let God reveal the real yeah. thing. Because sometimes the things yeah. that look like yeah. the thing, are not the yeah. thing. They are so not. that retreat yes. is very important. Nothing will happen. Nothing will yeah. happen. Like, you see, ah, if I leave now, if I go, if I did, leave. Your... Leave right. to come back. If God wants you to come back, he will ordain it. And that's what happened with yeah. you. You left. Then I pointed out that one that number one, you left the environment. Number two, you healed. Number three, you, you sought knowledge. Yeah. Knowledge. I, I, because... I also, I, any for me, I also forgave. I had to mm. forgive. You had to let you, him go. No, I went back to the church mm. and he was still there. And he was, he was yeah, still there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was still there. Yes, I'm going to go back. I, I put it down there. <laughs> the last point is you went back. So I'm going to talk about forgiveness. Day. So, yeah, so I went left the environment. I had, I had to forgive him. I had to forgive him. I had to leave him in the hands of God. And I had to trust yes. God for my one. For yeah. your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you left the environment, number one. Number two, you healed. Yeah. And there's a process that I'll go to that in the last um, point I, I noted number three you you sought knowledge and you learned the lessons from the experience and yeah. that formed the basis of what you're doing today that you're living again today is because you learned the lesson from the mistakes that you made that's right many people don't learn the lessons from the mistakes that mm -hmm. they make they make mm -hmm. the mistake they don't pick somewhere and make more mm -hmm. mistakes or they pray and just mm -hmm. wish that they will not make those mistakes again. Mm -hmm. The guarantee that you will not make a previous mistake is that you learned from the previous mistake that you made. Otherwise, right. it will be a case of repetitive patterns. And this yeah. will not be a village people uh, reason. Yeah. It will be a you have refused to take the things yeah. that God has, you know, given you as tools yeah. to yeah. learn because yeah. you're, so, you're so fixated on a particular yeah. kind of way you want to yeah. appear or because yeah. you want to make people think, oh, you, you are know okay. how I say it. You know how I say it. I say, wow. number one, your mistakes, your mistakes, they are not the end of you. They are not final. And that's yes. something everyone should know. Mm. But I also always say that the mistakes are the price that we pay for a full life. If we mm. can learn from those mistakes. If we can learn. If only we can learn. Mistakes 
are the catalyst to the miraculous. Mm. If you will put those mistakes in the hands learn. of God, and those are yes. the two things I did. I learned from it, but I also put that mistake yeah. in his hand. Ah, God, you see me, and I came all the way for this guy, and I stayed. I was pure in the UK, even though th there was a guy that used to send me gifts, almost like choking me that I want to be with you, you know. But if you put it in the hands, ah, I made a mistake, but put it in his hands. Yes, it's the catalyst for the yes. miracle. He will even be the one highlighting the lessons because for me, the very first book I wrote, Dear Singles, were mistakes I had made, and God pointed out those mistakes to me. And it was him that pointed them out to me. I didn't even know that they were mistakes. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. in my mind, mm -hmm. I, I, I was mm -hmm. doing the right thing now. And then God is telling you, yeah. no, it's purpose yeah. before man. Yeah. Like, you, you know, you preach about marriage and purpose. God had to teach yeah. me that it's purpose yeah. before man. You don't it find it. There is an agenda. Purpose. So it's, you first yes. say yes to God. Yes. You say yes to God first. You say yes, yes to purpose, yes. and then you say yes to the to one. The man. Because honestly speaking, what has happened in, 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 and is still happening is that many have said yes to the one before they even knew the life that God has called them to. Oh. How did you choose? How? How did you choose the one when mm. you did not know the life that you were going to live? Mm. And so there are so mm. many, there are so many who, and I'm, I'm grateful the Holy Spirit allowed this to come up again because it came up when you were talking, but I, I, I didn't want to cut you short. There are so many spouses that I have seen in my work who are in a marriage with a great person, but they feel so unfulfilled just because they know that they are not living the life that they are meant to live. Out of purpose. Ay. And so That's it's important that we first say mm -hmm. yes to God, yes to purpose, and then yes to the one. For those who are single, and for those who are not single, it's okay to review that order and mm -hmm. to say, okay, God, open the eyes of my heart. Let me see the life you have destined for me. Mm -hmm. And as it's showing mm -hmm. you, prayerfully begin to show the partner, begin to pray yes. that the Lord begins to align the to partner show him too. for the yes. life that you have. Yes. Can imagine any for me, I can tell you for free that if I had married that gentleman, I would not be doing what I'm doing today. Lie, lie. I, you I can, and there, are many things I can, there, there are many things I can tell you to prove that, but there, there's no need. I can tell you for free. Mm. And so we have to mm. be careful that those things that come our way sometimes is really the en enemy Any hindering us from Ephesians 2.10. Just remember yeah. that. And many times they look, they don't look like they're bad things. They don't look like they're derailing you from god you said you were a sunday school teacher he was a head yep. usher so that's like that's to me that sounds like a very perfect yep. Yep. union in on the outside right but there yeah. is a life that god already designed yeah. from the inside that was yeah. you were already not in alignment yeah. so there was nothing and that's why you now marry and be saying okay let me try to make myself in a certain way let me try to do this so that i will save my marriage you are not in a, there's nothing you are not in alignment god can still save that marriage but why go through that stress where you can just align and then God will bring you to the man that God has destined you. So I had to highlight that lesson part because that's the, one of the basis of living yeah. again. Learning the lessons from the yeah. mistake and the experience, it becomes yeah. a tool in the hand of God. Yeah, I, I, I can hear you now, any for me. And I think that it's important to say this because it's coming very, you know, um, heavy in my heart that your mistakes don't have to define you. Honestly, um, they don't have to. Yep. I don't live yes. in my past. Um, because they, 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 you know, I said it before the enemy wants to, he wants to maim you, he wants to mock mm. you. But God wants to even use that mistake to make yes. you know a yes. message of his yes. power yes. of his power at work yes. in you of his grace yes. at work in you so it, it is not god's will to make that mistake your final it is mm. not his will mm. and so it's important to note that it, the only reason you will not live again is if you have chosen and you have told yourself that oh i made a mistake i'm a mistake and this mm. mistake is the final boss end it of is me not. yes it is yes. not Yes, there will be nothing God can even do because because He He works with our beliefs. He works with with us, and you need to know that, like you said, you you took the mistakes to God, and and this is I, I feel like every speaker that comes in here to speak, it's across the thread. The principles are the same: death and then life, death and then life. You die to live again. You take those things that the devil wanted to use to destroy you. You take them to God. And then God breathes his life on them yeah. and he makes it, he just makes it beautiful. He makes a good message out of it. And, and so no matter yeah. the kind of mistake you've made, if you're listening to us, like Jacqueline said, that's not the end of you. You need mm -hmm. to start telling yourself, I am not my mistake. 
We say mm -hmm. this all the time in the Live Again mm -hmm. movement that mm -hmm. your past does mm -hmm. not define you. Your mistakes are not you. Like you need to separate yourself from the mistake. It happened, but that's not you. And that's when you begin to see yourself differently and you begin to say, okay, there's more to me than this mistake I have made. And then God begins to highlight the lessons to you and you begin to grow. And as you grow through that challenge, through that experience, you begin to heal. I mean, you know, when you said you, said you had to align, that's living again. That's mm. the death to yeah. live again. That's the surrender where you've yeah. gotten to the end of your rope okay yes you came from from the uk you had your life planned out and now you're saying lord apparently the life i planned is not the life you planned <laughs> so i surrender and i align and then the next thing you went back after you yeah. i want to stay here a bit you know there is this movie called creed i watched the movie it's about um, boxing and everything and this guy had had like when he, when he was a child something happened between him and his cousin. I think there was a shootout, something like that. Him and his cousins became, they became enemies after that time. But the cousin too was also a boxer. He was also a boxer. Anyways, long story cut short, they had to fight together. And when they wanted to fight together, he was like, why, why am I going to fight this guy? Like, I thought, I don't want to fight this guy. I don't want to fight this guy. Then one day he went to the place, the spot where that thing happened, where that negative experience happened, where that thing that scarred him happened and he cried his heart out he cried because everything came back fresh like it just happened that day he cried then he told himself it's time to deal with the past and you cannot deal with the past if you don't confront the past that's what many people do they try to bury that past what you did after god began to heal you and you healed you went back to the same place where you were shamed and in that same place, God gave you double honor. God gave you your husband in that church. Hey! So, no, not from, so yes. my husband is not from that church. He what wasn't, he wasn't in that church. Yeah. But the point is, I was in that church and I was still there serving, worshipping God in that church when I got married. Yeah. You see? So, of course, the ears that heard my, you know, my shame or my disgrace or my heartbreak or my broken engagement, like they say, those same ears heard my marriage. And those same years, the same glory church, of God, you got married. they have heard the glory of God in my life to date. Exactly. And you got married in that no. church, right? That same church. Oh, I went to my mother's okay, church. Okay, went to Habba. your mother's Habba. church. Oh, okay. <laughs> but what, I, what I'm picking from there is, you went back I went back to my there. parents' church, yes. You went back there, and people I saw it with their koro koro eyes. I, yes. Including the haters. Yes. Including yes. the naysayers. Including the... Yeah, I, I, and that's the thing. <laughs> so hey, hey. And, and that's the thing. The thing, and I... So I, I, I love how you... You said, you know, that God made sure. And the thing I, I always say, and I want to share with somebody who may need this on this call, is that God has got great grace for your great mistakes. And I want that, I want that to just, I want that to be a seed in your heart. Not to make you go and start doing nonsense. Making mistakes everywhere. But to, yes. let you, but to let you know, and I know, and I've experienced yeah. it. That he has more grace than my disgrace. Whatever disgrace you think yes. you have seen, ah, I think mm. I've done it, ah, this, this, you know, what, mm. I don't know what it is. But I'm here to tell you that God's grace is more, far more, and it covers all of that thing. He's got great grace for your great mistakes. His grace is not going to quit, but it will make you a wonder to that place mm. or in that place where you were disgraced, so you know? Good. No, honestly. So good. Honestly. So, so honestly. Good. Oh, this is such a and I'm like, this is it. Like, oh my goodness. Oh my I just oh my my heart is bursting with joy. Yeah. My heart yeah. is bursting yeah. with joy. Yeah. Ooh, oh, this is it. This is what living again is about. It's not running away and just, you know, becoming hiding your face and saying I won't come out again. Mm -mm. Nobody should see me. That's I'm what the enemy that's wants. That's not the life. That's see. So any for me, see, I <gasps> thank you for going there because the, when the enemy tries to get you by maybe putting you under with um, an incident. So for instance, like the way I had a heartbreak and I should have just gone under with shame and all of that and depression, whatever. If he doesn't pass on that side, he will now wants to leverage on if he can put you in that very posture yes. so that at least whatever, at the end of the day, what he's looking for is that Ephesians 2.10 doesn't come to pass. Doesn't happen. So mm. you have to be guided. You have to be guided. Mm. Every time. That, that's why 
that scripture has been a scripture God gave to me for this session to say, go and share with them the scripture that I mm. gave you that your life and your purpose is anchored Ooh. on. If you always remember that there is a predestined yes. purpose, no matter what life throws at you, yes. you should remember yes. that I got to go. He's yes. got a plan. When yes. my mother conceived me and I did not die in the hospital yes. and I'm still living till today, there is a predestined purpose. There is. And I want to live there it is. out. And not think and stop it you know there mm. is no i like the way dedicate says it that there is no there is nothing that there's nothing big enough to stop god's purpose for your right. life like it's not right. i don't no matter how big the thing is no matter how it looks big in your eyes yeah god god yeah ah, no you can live again yeah. you can live again if only you are alive mm. thank you so much that was so rich i just felt like just staying there a mm. bit the next question i have for you is why is it important to live again why because <laughs> So people feel like, like you said, there are people that have great marriages. They have things they are doing. It looks good. And it actually is good. But that it is good doesn't mean it is God. Right? And mm. no matter how good something is, when the person aligns to God's perfect will, mm. it is better. It is best. But that's mm. my thoughts. But I want to know, mm. because some people are living their lives and they say, I don't need to go and disturb myself. In fact, there was a particular coaching client I had. She said, I don't want to go into the past. I don't want to go to the past because I don't want to go and bring out, um, how did she say it? I don't want Trauma. to go and bring out wounds that are now. Trauma. And I'm like, that's where exactly you need to go. That place gone, gone, that you don't want to go. That's where you need to go because there are lessons there. There are, there are gems there. And she was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to go. So people just feel like, okay, as long as it's, it's okay for me. Why do I need to go back to that thing that happened to me, that cost me pain, that mistake I had? They have numbed it, they buried it, and they feel like I'm doing fine. What do you have to say to that? And why, do, why is it important to live again? So, it's important to live again, like I already have been saying, because <laughs> you have a predestined purpose. You have a predestined life that God already ordained. That this is, you see... You know, I always tell people that God is not in heaven trying to strategize or trying to like do, you know, plan. He, he already sent us no running up as, as his down. plan. Yeah. As his plan. <laughs> like, go. And so you need to live again because there is one person or agent who the job description is to steal from you, kill, kill. the purpose. Yes. Do you see? Yes. Kill and the destroy. life, the destiny. Ooh. And to destroy so wow. that nothing of you be becomes beneficial or profitable to the kingdom of God and even to the people on earth. So you need to live again so that the devil continues to be in his position of defeat. Yes, you need to live again so that the people that God has ordained your life to be an answer to, huh, they will enjoy that and they will be free from what the enemy was planning to hold them down. And if I may, let me tell you something. I shared a story in Grace Junkie, which mm. really is the ultimate story of, you know, God's grace over my life. But when I shared that story, when I launched the book in 2021 or so, eh, my twin is here, I don't care. Um, and yeah, <laughs> those are the co-launchers of the book <laughs> and the work we did with it. I honor you, my darling friend. Um, when I, and I can see all my GPS are here. I say a lot of my mm -hmm. siblings and some of my, clients, my couple's clients, I can see them here. Anyway, and I honor you all. But um, when I launched that book, Any For Me, do you know, because of the heavy vulnerability in that book, we launched the book maybe today, or yeah, today, as an example today, by, it wasn't up to a week, someone had come to me to say, we have someone who is in this situation you shared in your book, and she's thinking of doing the ab ab abominable can you please talk to her? And I realized that even if that was all that God made me go vulnerable for, she has that lo she was lovely. She, she has that child today. And I'm deep. Every time I see her post, I'm just like, God, I thank you. Because yes. the only way I could actually now say, don't do this. This is this. Don't do that. And I, I said, let me just open up. This is what God has taught me since I let, you know, my teenage life. And I learned this. Don't. And she said, ah, she said, I can't tell my parents. that they're good. I said, please, can I help you tell them? Can I? 
Now, um, I just said, um, yeah, and I remember she, the day she had a baby. She said, I want to thank God for you because if not for you, this child will not be. Anyways, all the glory to God. But the point to bring out of it is that if I did not choose the path of Ephesians 2.10, if I did not choose to say I would live again, this was supposed to bury me. This was supposed to be an issue of shut up. You should not have mouth. Yes. Yes. You yes. Mouth, you know? Yeah. Mm. But, but because the Lord gave me the grace, allowed me to enjoy that amount of grace. He said, oh yeah, go and share my testimony. And in sharing, in living again, someone else lived. And yes. many others are living. <gasps> so you see why you have to live again you have to and we know we have said that living again is living the life that god has destined predestined for you it's not whether you are showing up fine on social media is that yes, the life that yes. god has destined on you that when you open the books jacqueline this is what we said she, she, she would do yeah and you are walking in that path that's what it means to live again so to do that is to be an answer on earth mm. 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 it doesn't need us to be an answer in heaven it's here mm. In every way, mm -hmm. we are going to just go and be worshiping and be abiding with him mm -hmm. and be, you know, it's here. You need mm -hmm. to be an answer. You need to also be light on the path of so many others. But if, yes. what if you think, who are so many others? Let's start with your children. I always say that every time. Oh. I, want to to, I want to speak to women and anybody who is maybe in a, situ in a marriage situation that is really troublesome, you know. The reason you must live again is because you must give your children a, a different story. And if yes. you may, because of the work I do yes. as a marriage counselor, as a therapist, as a coach, I sit in sessions with intending couples. And sometimes we are in sessions for two hours where we're just breaking down the trauma of their parents', parents. marriage. Oh. Oh God, oh God, let's stay here. So, let's stay here. So oh to live again is to Ooh. free the next generation Ooh. from what the enemy wanted you to go through or was hindering you or was holding you or holding you to. I'm telling you. And so when I get into session and we, you know, and, and you, you'll be, yeah, I, can't, I, can't, I can't really start listing those examples. But even as an example, let, let me tell you something. You know, and I love that the Holy Spirit is bringing this up. Let me, I'll use myself as an example. I grew up in a marriage that my father did everything. You know, he, when I say everything, my father, let me, let me say that again. My father used to send all the money. Okay. Um, and so he wasn't always around. He would always, he would only come back. And I think I wrote that in my book as well. He would only come back in December and he would go in January. He was working in America. And so my mother was the mother and father with us. But what we knew was that daddy should send dollars and daddy was one paying the bills. And, and many other things that I saw in the context of that marriage, that it was easy for me to take on, to say, that's what I saw. That's what, it's supposed, that's what it's supposed, supposed to be. be. Mm. Mm. And if, we did, if I didn't take the moment to say marriage, what does God expect of marriage? Mm. Is it meant to be one person or two people coming together? Mm. Is it meant to be two people combining forces? Is it meant to be just two, one mm. husband honoring the wife mm. and the wife honoring? Is it meant to, if I didn't bring myself, and that's an example of living again, bringing yourself mm. to that place of knowledge so that you can live mm. again. And if for me, I believe that I would have had a very troublesome marriage by now. Mm. And this is what, I'm, and what am I trying to say? I'm just trying to say, that you can cut short the plan of the enemy to continue to make cycles of nonsense from one generation to the other. Cycles of nonsense. To live right. That's, that's to it. To live again. To live in the predestined life that ah. Jesus Christ gave you. The life of light. The life of knowledge. Wow. Do you see? Woo! So, and, so, and that's good. just a, a, an example. And there are many other examples that comes to mind. I'm telling you, you know, as little, do you know as little as someone saying, I don't like to go, I just like to be alone. And then, and then we go into the deep details in pre-marriage counseling. It's like, oh, my parents were always like this. And it's supposed to say, I want her to go out, help me go. As little as, as trivial as that, sometimes mm -hmm. we just carry it on. Yes. But the moment we open ourselves up to live to the fullness, to maximize yes. life, to show yes. up in the full way. Yes. Do you see? Uh-huh. 
then you'll be surprised how much it will, it will deliver. Because some people are taking on what they saw. And what they saw taking necessarily what was they not the saw. best. Was what not they the best yeah, What so. they observed. And, and the thing is, so, yeah. oh God, thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming here. Because this is where, this is really why living again is important. This is the crux of it. Like, there are things that happen to us. It's not when that thing that, you know, it's, sometimes we think, it as when a negative experience like a mistake happens to us that's the beginning that's not the beginning the beginning is the seed that the enemy sowed when you were a child from the things you observed in your own like your own family yeah yeah, that's yeah, yeah it starts with yeah. the end goal for that big mistake but yeah. there's, that's not where it started yeah. the, where it started is you saw something you witnessed something yeah. you observed yeah. something and so thinking, yeah. oh, I'm okay. And we, a lot of Christians do these things. Oh, I'm a child of God. I love God. I'm serving God. As long as I'm serving God, I don't even need to check through, you know, my, my childhood and look through, you know, my experiences and check, is there trauma somewhere? You, you, you don't, you don't want to know. There is. You don't want to know the heavy meat. I just gave us the surface meat, the heavy meat <laughs> that one uncovers in the place of, and, and that's why I'm always grateful for this work. Because it's definitely, it's, be, it's deeper than social media posts. The work that God is doing in the background uh -huh. to make sure that people truly live the life that he has truly. destined for them. Like, yes. do you think that God really planned that people will not be in thriving, wholesome, joyful marriages? Do you really, like, do you think so? No. He expects us to have heaven on earth. But the yes. things that the enemy has the done things. to make sure that they people are. don't live this life yeah. is painful. It's painful. Yeah. The people that have that marriage, this marriage where... My, your, my husband is all over me. I'm all over him. I'm into him. Do you see? We're both chasing the plans of God and walking in the path of God. This life where we are just all about the Lord and enjoying whatever we have, not even trying to be like anybody. And there's so much love in this home and this atmosphere. Do you think it's only for a few? No, it's not. But it's because there are some things that need to be removed for you to be so empty so that God can fill you with his own, with his plan, his way and his will this is why we must live again oh. yes because i believe that if my children generation by the grace now. of god mm. by the grace of god in the next 20 whatever years i always say to my clients in pre-marriage counseling and i'll gift all of you that i will gift you that today i always say imagine when your child in 20 25 years sits before a marriage counselor like you are sitting in front of me now what would you want them to say about your marriage what would you want them to say your marriage taught them some people are shouting in their homes and doing all sorts with their spouses just because that is what they saw and they have not brought themselves to light come to jesus christ come to the word of god to take the real principles of the predestined for a great marriage predestined. So yes because when, people you know, I are making say, money and they're yeah. saying all my money and I, I, I don't want to go into these examples. Let me just keep it you because, know, yeah. Not, again. Something I, I said one time, I said sometimes the desires of our hearts are not really the desires of our hearts. The desires <laughs> of our hearts are projected desires. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have a desire of your heart. You think you, you want a marriage a certain way. Mm. Let's use marriage since you are the marriage evangelist. That's your mm. idea of marriage because of the things you've seen, the things you've observed, the things you, you know, the things you were taught. And then God has a desire for your marriage. So sometimes the desires of our heart are not the true desires. We somebody projected them. Somebody, you know, like your parents keep telling you, oh, you have to marry a man that is rich. You have to marry a man that is rich. They, they tell you so much, they program you, and it becomes your desire. In fact, you begin to desire a man that is rich. Thinking and that's, that's why desire. And, somebody and that's why I knew for that's why I knew for me everyone needs to come in contact with the light. You see what I like about Ephesians 2.10, and you say I'm saying it every time. It's because it starts by saying that we are a masterpiece. Yes. It says we are workmanship. It yes. says we are recreated, you know, by Christ Jesus. The problem with the person who has been told all of that and all of that, the missing gap is that light you have not come in contact with. Yes. To recreate you to the life that God has destined for you. 
So that's the big issue. I feel like everyone needs that recreation. Everyone. That's the thing so that we can do right. You know? Yes. So, 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 so I'll give you another example that comes to mind heavily. Is how someone is in a session and someone is saying, you know, I'm going to leave him if anything goes wrong. Like, I'm, I'm ready. I'm, you know, oh, yeah, she, she always tells me that if it doesn't work, she's going to go. And that's even before signing the dotted lines. But that's, that, that's not, like you said, not really the wish. Like I always say, nobody comes together to break up. It's, you yes. know, some I know that that's, when you see them dancing a lot of that, they're not hoping that we're going to do this for two years and bye-bye yes. or 10 years and bye-bye. Yes. You know, but again, it's the thing that the enemy has put in there from the background. It's I always feet. say, yeah. Is here. It's here. Yes. They just pull it out the day they need it. Like I will just do this, yes. you know. And until we got into it, said, "Oh well, it's because of this and that and that and that." That had nothing to do with that current relationship. So you know, it's important that recreation is when we begin to live again, when we come in contact with light, and we let the grace of God, you know, show us the way and the path that He has destined for us, yes. and we live in it. We live in that way. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You know. You know, God gave me a, a, a work to do this year. It's, it's a live again outreach. And what he showed me was, <laughs> he showed me a vision of women that were, there were a lot of women wearing suits, wearing suits. They were looking good, but they were walking like this. You know how vampires walk, like zombies. <laughs> and, I, I, and in that vision, I understood, I understood a lot of things. One of the things I understood was that that's the, an army of women that are, doing things, moving around, walking, doing all sorts, but they're not living. They're they like, they like walking dead. They're they are, they are like corpses. They're just patching things up as against exposing things to the light. For the light to begin to shine there and begin to do that work, they're just, you know, using like wounds, using um, um, band-aids on top of a wound and band-aids and band-aids and band-aids. And, and, and this thing is deeper than what we are seeing. Take me, for example, you know, I went through abuse. I went through, that time I met you, right? I don't know if you noticed. And let me tell you, I don't think you noticed because you were, you were busy with the event, right? Something happened to me. So before that time or around that time, I had just, be, I had just been recovering from the abuse, right? And, so let me, and, let me stop you. Let me stop you for a minute. So today I said I was thinking a lot about you. It wasn't so much about me. It was so much about the Holy Spirit telling me that mm. and there's something i can't say but i'll say it offline but god was telling me something that i noticed that day, and he was saying do you know if that was when she was going through stuff and he was telling me today mm. that you know that thing that you noticed that yeah do you know if that was when she was going through stuff and when she was not able to tell me that this is one person i've also carried on the arms of my grace so i when you were said like oh my goodness she's gonna say it. yeah but i can tell because the woman yeah. you have become is very evident of the healing of God. Hey, it's very evident of the saving grace of God. Yes. And someone who has said, no, I'm not going to stay in this place of wrath Honest. that the enemy wanted to keep me. Yes. And I'm yes. going to leave again. I can tell. Yeah. And I give God praise for you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I was severely, that time I was, it was, it, we don't want to know. We'll talk about it offline. But I was severely abused, right? Mm. But I was in the place where I was, I was still like, God. You need to show me. Is the part of oh God, what is really going on? You need to help me. I need to know. And you came to be on. the MC that day. And I came to that. MC. But let me tell you now what happened. When Omi and Omi is going to watch this video. <laughs> when Omi and her husband came and they were speaking about something, they were speaking about the very thing that I felt was one of the biggest issues that had caused what happened and i'll say it openly adultery you see a lot of reasons why men abuse women is because of side chicks i will say it openly and i'll say it because women need to stop being the problem of women women need to stop and it might never end but what i'm saying is when a woman is going through stuff it shouldn't be another woman causing that woman pain but many times when when there is adultery, of course, a man cannot commit adultery with a man now, except he's gay or something. Most times, it's another woman. And then the man begins to see the wife as, you know, oh, you are not like this one. And then sometimes the women now want to take over the marriage. Like, okay, I want this man for myself. So you don't know what happened that time. I went to the back. So you know how they ask, they say, come and ask questions to the, <laughs> to the speakers. I had a question. I could not ask it openly. <laughs> so I went to 
the back and I asked the question. And as I was asking the question, I broke down in tears. So at the back, nobody saw this. It was just me and her and her husband. I cried my heart out. I cleaned my eyes and I went back to MC. <laughs> <laughs> now why did i share that story why did i share that story mm. by the time god began to show me my life he made me understand that you are not just going through this there was a seed then he showed me how my mother was also going through the same thing mm. then he made me mm. see reason why i need to live again so that my doctors so that the people coming after me do not go through it because like you said awareness many times we are not aware my mom was not aware of anything like oh she just felt okay maybe it's one of those things like you said great marriage my father was a my father he was a great man oh, in terms of oh providing and everything he was he was it right but that thing that happened to her that she that she didn't pay attention to was enough for the enemy to say okay let me just do it to her daughter and if i did not pay attention to it of course the enemy would have repeated the same thing with my child so why is it important to live again i always say this thing generational trauma is real and you don't you're not going to be a bad person you are a, you'll be a good person but you still experience it if you don't like you said in your, your premarital counseling you always take them through that that's such a commendable thing because it's not by coming to be asking them questions it's okay so what kind of marriage do you hope to have <laughs> what kind of this you know so yeah. how you know how do you see your marriage? Eh, eh. there are deep things the work the work is those deeper things than are that. not dealt with yeah they will enter that marriage and be doing those things then because yeah. for me i thought okay it was just this man this man later god started to show me he said no there were things you observed yeah. that you also brought in yeah. and that's where the thing that's that's why i always tell women that you're not living again for me it's mm -hmm. not for me Mm. It's not for the gram. Mm. It's not for one person that is looking at you and saying, hey, mm. let me see whether she will make it. Yeah. It's for those coming after you. Yeah. You cannot afford for them to enter the same thing. Yeah. And, 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 and just being able to see that it's a trauma thing. It's a, it's a, the devil is not coming for only you kind of thing. It's coming mm. for your entire mm. generation. Mm. That's why if you're a woman listening to me, you cannot afford to be sleeping. You can't, you can't. You can't even say, okay, I'm okay now. I'm fine. I'm okay. I, I, nothing is wrong with me. Go and ask. Say, Holy Spirit, is there anything in my foundation? Is there any trauma anywhere? Highlight to me the things that happened to me as a child. The things I saw that I have forgotten about that the enemy is waiting for to yes, use. Absolutely. Or that the enemy can use. Like, you need to go back into that thing. If you really want to truly live, oh, there are things you need to go. You have to go back inside your yes. past. That's yeah. where a lot of things are and that, that yeah. you can be able to help, help you to live again, yeah. you know? So I had to share that because yeah. the outreach God gave me mm. to do is tied around that. Yeah. It's tied around helping women rebuild the desolations of many generations. And it's so interesting mm. that the scripture you used mm. is the theme of the outreach. You said the enemy came to steal, right? He came to kill and he came to destroy. The theme of the outreach is I have come that they might have life and life abundantly. That's right. And the reason why they need to step into that abundant life is because there are things the enemy has stolen. There are things the enemy has killed. There are things the enemy has destroyed. And God wants them to live again. And that's the theme of the outreach. So anybody listening to me, I want to encourage you to please um, um, join us at the Live Again Outreach. Link please. is in my bio. You can read about it. But please. that's not the issue. Here. Please. That's not yeah, the, the, it's very important. That's not the reason. <laughs> you know, I don't want to stay there for too much. I want to go to the next question, which is on pain. Mm. And before I talk about pain, I'll talk about what happened to me when I was five years old. My mom was crying in the bathroom, and I heard her crying. And I went to knock on her door, and I was crying because I didn't know why she was crying, but I knew she was in pain, and I was crying. And that day. It was like I felt the pain in my chest. It was so heavy. I was just, <laughs> because she was crying. And I don't know why she was crying. But I felt so connected to her. Anyway, long story cut short. Years later, God revealed that incident to me. And he said I carried her pain. I never knew. I never. It, it wasn't. It, it couldn't have come to my mind. Because, it, 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 you know, you feel oh, you're passionate about women. You, you you know, you're doing women things. Why are you, you know, how did it start? When did it? I realized that my mom was was had she was having pain, but she couldn't she didn't know how to process you know that pain, so that pain was transferred to me. <laughs> and 
I didn't know I had it. So I'll say things like, oh, God forbid, I'm not marry a man like this. All men are cheats. All men are this. I was carrying my mother's spirit because I was seeing what she was going through. And what she was going through was not funny. I carried that pain. And the devil used that pain as a, as a what do they call it? Like a, a, a foundation to be able to cause me more pain. So I don't want to go, that, go deep into that. I want you to share how do you handle pain? So, you know that pain is a tool. I don't even of know course. if you know. Yes. If people know. Yes. It's a uh -uh. tool, <laughs> you know. And everything we go through in life, honestly, I always feel like there are two kingdoms that can, you know, leverage it. Mm. The enemy has his own kingdom. Satan and his kingdom and his cohorts, yeah. they can leverage that pain and yeah. keep you in that place of rot. Mm -hmm. But the kingdom of God is also hoping to use that pain, you know to make and to usher you into purpose. Yeah. So what I do with my pain is to really seek the face of God to say, what is this about? Why does it hurt so much? First, where did I even get it from? How about that, you know? Where did I get it from? Um, why does it hurt so much? What is it me? Is it even just my heart not just being able to process well? Mm. But more importantly, is to make sure that I'm not in offense. I think that's always very important for me and make sure that the pain doesn't push me to the path of error. So, you know, mm. because I have all those gadgets, those red, it's like a red light flagging in my head about this thing I'm going through. Um, it helps me to navigate it properly. So I always say, I pray the pain. I pray over the pain and I also pray with the pain. Do you see? Wow. Um, I pray because, with the yes. pain. Oh, you don't yeah, deny the yeah. pain or the emotion it's part mm -hmm. of it yeah. i love it yeah I love so it. i pray with it i ask him to teach me or show me what needs to be seen it's interesting how you talk about what you picked from your mom <laughs> it's interesting how all the many things that you know we're sharing today do you know that when my husband was going on i think a lot of people know that so it's not news that i live in the united kingdom but when my husband was going to leave the country, whilst I had been a great catalyst because the Lord had led our hearts to do that, and he was big, he was, I'm not going to go, you know, even though he was, you know, he was born here. Um, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to go. Eventually, after, you know, praying, agreeing, you know, being the backbone and pushing and just, you know, cheerleading him into it, he left his job and he was going to go. And we didn't realize one time that I was not going to go with him, you know, that um, even though he was British and the kids were British, I had to wait back in Nigeria for him to come to the UK, get a job, settle in, get a house, and then he will now apply for his spouse visa. I want to show you how the enemy can make a mess of us with pain. Yes. This was the journey that we made many years. This is not Jaffa journey. This is, we've been here now. My husband's going to be, I think, eight years this year. Yeah, seven mm. years, something like that. So the Lord was leading our heart, you know, mm. as to this, is the plan and if you have read, read my book you know that it's beyond that this was really prophecy but the what i want to bring out is how pain pain can hinder you from the plan yes and purpose of god yes and why you must deal with it you why to. you must mm. deal with it the way i said i said pray it away but mm -hmm. pray with it with pray it. the pain away pray over the pain but pray with it let me tell you what happened to me the a few days oh, before he left after all my after all the you know being the wife now she be able to help me to table so making sure that god's plan for your husband's life comes to pass is an example yeah when it was about two days to him to leave and you know it was clear that he was leaving and he was going to leave me behind in nigeria and for me do you know what came up in my life that night what? Pain. <laughs> pain. pain of the past hey! the things the things i had seen flashed before my eyes and I started crying and wailing on the floor. My husband was shocked. I mean, any I remember that I, I did my master's in the UK. So I know that UK is just six hours. Like, what is it, Jackie? I was wailing. He was confused because he said, I thought this was like you were, what was happening tonight, you know? And I kept on wailing. <laughs> Until the man said, okay, what is it? Don't oh, leave me. Don't leave me. I'll be sending me pounds from the UK like my father did to my mother. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. My husband's, you know, immediately he just, you know how before he was still doing, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? The eyes just changed. Like, 
what do you mean i'm not your father i'm telling you for free real life so when i'm saying that <laughs> i realized that night that god showed me a version of myself that was covered up which is all of those things that didn't look right didn't feel right i had the pain of disappointment my father had promised i was going to read my i had my masters in america i was supposed to he was, he was a green card holder i was supposed to be in america anyway you know all that pain all that disappointment they were there it was like everything came out that night and my husband yes. has to remind me i won't betray you i won't fail you my husband has to say you know what if i am not able to get you guys a social time i will come back and spend time with you i will go back and continue like he had to like babe no this is so and i shared the story and i just hope that if that's if that's all that god really wants to do tonight <sighs> that a lot of us will just consciously sit with the way we behave the yes. way we think yes and the manifestations we see in our homes yes. in our lives yes and just submit it to god. god that's what i'm saying about god. me saying i'm praying with the pain and say god what is this are what you showing this? me myself are you showing me what the enemy has deposited you can imagine the, the the lens from which i now looked at the prophecy of god mm. god fulfilling his plan mm. pain, through the eyes of pain pain Ooh. covered the prophecy oh covered the plans of yes so that's why you must pray you say god show me what's here show me, show me myself remove me from this because sometimes it's not even your pain, but you're just taking it yes. on. Chebi, was it my carrying pain? it now? It was yes, my pain. was transferred to you. Oh my so, goodness! And this yeah. is what causes generational yeah. trauma. It's interesting that we share all this. Okay. Anyway, so yeah, that's it, and um, and that's what I'm gonna say. You know, don't. I think we always take we always we are defensive with pain. Don't be defensive with it. Oh. You know bring it lay it you know lay it it needs to be exposed it needs to, you can't be covering pain yeah. you have to expose call it let the, the holy spirit the name. sit on it call it the yes. name that you need it to call is, it yes. remember i said about the heartbreak episodes i cried my eyes out crying is it's actually the, not it's just therapeutic it's, it's important so that you're letting it out and it doesn't have yes. a hold on you what is happening you? Okay. you know uh. it's okay and that's why we shouldn't tell don't tell anybody not to cry don't tell your boy not to cry okay please let him cry if it's you know ah. um so that's that's how i deal with it maybe i mean this in this life i'm living no that's how i deal with pain you I, know I, and I'm, i present I'm, it yeah and i'm happy that that thing happened and you and i feel like it was the holy spirit that allowed that was deliverance right there oh, because yeah. even if your husband did not have the intention to do that thing and you had kept it inside you, yeah. David would have used it. Because the mind, yeah, because the mind yeah. is crazy. So it was really yes. God just showing me to myself. Yes. You know, and just saying, what is this? Yes. What is this thing I've not put here that you're trying to put yes. here, madam? It's not yes. here. It's not yes. here. That's what the would have married. used it and created opportunities for that thing, that, that thing to happen because it was already existent inside of you. It, yeah. So <laughs> how, you, how you deal with pain, how you deal with pain is critical. It can Very block critical. you. It can yes. make you blind to the mm. life that God has destined for you. Honestly, you see all this thing, it just points to the same thing. The life that God has destined for I could have just said, don't go again, no. You exactly. Know? exactly. <laughs> Everything could have just stopped. Like, so many <laughs> So many things could have happened from that experience. But because you said it, you know, God used it. Mm. And because you already aligned to God and you were God's child and you already aligned, God said, no, this one will not happen the way it's happened for those it's, coming before her. It's, yeah. And because uh, yeah. Like, and, and it's the hand of it. grace. Oh. You remember what I said? It's the yes. hand of grace. It's, it's the hand of it's grace. grace. It's and grace. And that's why we must really begin to look out for that finger of grace in everything. You know, something that happened to A, that happened to A, and A didn't come back strong from it, and it happened to you, and you, you are still able to come out of it. You better know that the hand of God is there, you know, and is helping you. And don't, don't stay there. Say, God, what? there what's the plan you have for my life why did you let me come out of this fire of this you know lake or whatever why i want to step into that why don't just any for me let me let me do this don't be the esther that was destined to be the savior don't be the esther that was destined to be the savior of a nation the one that god will use to save his people 
Don't be the one that stays in the testimony place of, praise the Lord, imagine me an orphan. The king made me his wife. And if I mean, do you know that it is, that's, and that's, that's the thing about being content with the little when there is more. When there is more. That's the thing about staying in that place. You know what? And that's why when I read Ephesians 2.10, I talked about, I talked about the fact that God said, I recreated you in Christ Jesus and he gave the why. A lot of us are, we think we're living. We have only stayed in the recreation in Jesus and we have not moved to the why. The Bible says for the good works good that work. he predestined for us and he planned for us. The Bible actually even talks about the good life he wants us to live and the works that he wants us to do on his behalf. You know, I was saying, don't be that Esther wife, woman or man, whatever. Whatever it is that God has even done for you and has brought you to a point where you're like, oh my God. See, what well, Esther, I can imagine Esther's testimony, but for the grace of God, but for the, the hand of, you know, mentoring Mordecai who came and said, yes. there is more to your life who than was this very queen, queen nonsense. Yes. This queen nonsense is just the pathway. Any yes. moment to live again is to really step first into that place of, being a queen, but to now say, why am I, I a, a queen? queen? Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> what What did God have in I... mind when he when he Ooh, made me, Jackie, so marry Tolu? What did God have in mind when he I... made Esther marry I... queen? I be marry the king and become queen. See, Ooh. if Esther was going to write her hmm. live again and her Ephesians two ten story. She would say, I thank the Lord for saving me. I thank the Lord for putting me in the house of Mordecai, my uncle, because that was God positioning me for yes. the plans and purpose that he has for me. I thank the Lord for making me queen. But honestly, it wasn't about the queenship and the palace and the royal treatment. It was because the children of God were not meant to be destroyed and they needed to be saved at such a time like this. This, this is why you must leave the game. This is powerful because there is very, there's a very high tendency when you begin to succeed for you to merely exist. There is a very high tendency that you choose to merely exist over truly living because of the price you have to pay for truly living, which is actually most times very, very difficult. It would have been better for Esther to be a baby girl for life queen down for her to go and do three days fasting and all those wahala because she wanted to save the children of Israel. She wanted but to there are tribes connected. Yeah, there are life. lives connected to you. And that's yeah. why you have to live again. Hey! Yeah. Nobody would have known Esther. Nobody would have been talking about her. The, yeah. the fact the, the plan for God, for God putting her in the palace would have not been fulfilled if she yeah. did not step out and say I, if i perish and, and I any for me any for me and that's why you know one of the things i teach in my marriage classes in my courses and you know that that's why if you see what i do i say marriage on purpose because a lot of us we haven't understood that getting married is and this is where you see you see that live again that the end that doing the good works and ah, and doing the good works, you see, that's where it really comes from. That when I even bring you together with a gentleman I've ordained for you, when I bring you together with my son that I've ordained for you, it is not for Mr. Mm -hmm. and Mrs. It mm -hmm. is not for Instagram photos. Those gram. things are good. I do them, but it is beyond that. It's not for same color of clothes, you know, Uncle. match, match, like Uncle. we say in your bank, mm -hmm. you know. It's not for that. Those things are just, it is for the 10,000s that you need to chase. When he made Esther the wife of the king, even that king did not understand that it was a marriage on purpose that was being ordained. Yes, that yes. That would deliver yes, yes. the children of God. There yes. is the deliverance of the children of God for every union that God brings together. Mm. And I just feel like that's something to bring us so that when we also go and get married, we don't have a mediocre marriage. 
of we're just okay Existing. traveling and we have to we yes. can, we go on a holiday yes. with our children yes. that's all if you get married and you are and you are just having children and not raising godly children you are existing to live again and to live the life that god has ordained for you as a couple is to raise godly children that is the real thing that's one purpose of marriage according to god's plan not just to procreate and have children and have we were two we have become six mm -hmm. no it is to give to and him to celebrate marriage for, anniversary and to post it fine is to picture. give to him for other soldiers for the kingdom through your marriage hmm. And I, and and I, I want can to go, add to institute, I can go on and on. Into institute the will of God for your lineage. Because yeah. there is a lineage in that, in that marriage yeah. that if that marriage does not fulfill God's purpose, that, that which the enemy has already created and arranged, the pattern that was existing before that union came yeah. will continue. Yeah. It will. Because yeah. there's already an old pattern. And you need to be aware. Yeah. You need to yeah. look into that your, mar your, your family and say, what is the existing pattern and why are things this way? Yeah. Why and is my mother how can I, and, my and how my can mother? I walk away and from yes, it, Lord? How can yes. I how can I walk away from this? How can this be the how can that person be the last person that this happens yes. to? And how can yes. this union manifest your your love, yes. your true undying love? Yes. These are the big things that really motivate my husband and I. How can this union showcase your love? Do you see? Oh wow. And and yeah, there's a lot it's there. There's a lot. But honestly, if you are listening to us, one thing you should take away is never think that you are fine. Always ask God, what, what, is, the, what is the why? What, yeah. is the, what is the more out of this? What is your will? Yeah. And that's where living again is. Because even when this living again thing is an ongoing yeah. process. Because every yeah. time, life will knock you down. Not, not yeah. once, not twice, yeah. not three times. Yeah. Secondly, there's a tendency to merely exist when you attain a particular there level There are layers of, of us that are unveiled. For every time we continue to walk yes. with the Lord and continue to walk in His path, layers of us are unveiled. Yes. You, and you, me, you were not like this five years ago. I wasn't like this five years ago. <laughs> but the more we continue to live, the yes. more we continue to live again and saying tomorrow i want to show up do you see yes i want what else god what's there what's the good work what's the next good work what's the next right? oh my goodness yeah you mm. see now what's that the it can't be the same we are always never, shedding off a layer easy, we're always shedding I, off a layer it's never easy and i have to say this because i always say living again is not easy yeah it's, it's easier not, to exist it's, it's easier not a joke. to exist yeah but the truth is, like Mordecai told Esther, don't think you are safe, oh. yeah. Don't think yeah. you are safe in this yeah. because you are for me, queen, queen, queen. Yeah. He got touch you. Yeah. He got reach everybody. And yeah. Mordecai had to yeah. tell her. And I'm yeah. sounding like Mordecai today, mm. as the voice of the <laughs> one crying in the wilderness. <laughs> to Absolutely. say that, don't think you are safe in that yeah. castle or that thing yeah. you think you have built. Yeah. That God, you see, there is a higher you God is yeah. calling on to. Yeah. There is yeah. a newer you. There is something God is planning for you this year. You cannot miss it. Please, if you've not registered for Live Again After Church, I'm going to appear to you where you are right now because it's the way, it's the, way the thing is doing me. If somebody had, had sat me down to show me the things that I know now before, I, 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 I don't regret. In fact, I tell God every day, I tell God, thank you for my pain. Thank you for what happened to me. Thank you for the fact that I went through what I went through. I won't be the woman I am today yeah. if yeah. I didn't go through that. Yeah. I'm grateful. Yeah. I am too. In fact, my heart is full of joy every time I think about how God turned the thing that the enemy wanted to use to ruin me yeah. to build me up. So yes, right? I, I, I'm not saying that, oh, um, um, I'm angry or anything. I'm just saying that whew, God wants you to live again. He wants to. Yeah, he wants God you to. God wants you. There is a life, like, like Jacqueline said, there is your life, then there is a life that God has predestined. That's right. You need to come and align. You know, right. our great general, DDK, has been talking a lot about bold beginnings, resilient resurgence, and big bounce backs. That is what Live Again is about. I was screaming because when God gave me Live Again Outreach two years ago, I have been stalling and saying, God, Tell me the time for this thing. And as last year, he made me understand that this is time. time. And we started planning. Yeah. He said 2024 is a very critical year. It's a year that is not normal. You cannot allow. He just kept saying. Yeah. 2024 is the year that it will be like 10 years in one. Yeah. The year where the years will make sense. I'm like, yeah. God, 
thank you. This is the good work you have planned for now yeah. for me to yeah. do. Thank That's you right. for the grace That's for me right. to align. That's because right. this can only be yes. you. Oh my goodness. I'm just yes. so excited because yes. God is set to revive his daughters. God is set yeah. to, 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 to help women take back what the enemy stole from their grandmothers, Absolutely. their great grandmothers, their Absolutely. great great grandmothers that they could not conquer. To have the life to, life to, to have the life to have the life that they did not have. To have the life that they did not have. Oh my goodness. This was so wholesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you so yeah. much for, for, for doing this with me. Like, I just, I just like what the Holy Spirit did here tonight. It's just yep. beautiful. Yep. It's wholesome. It's authentic. Yeah. Ah, yeah. There is so and much about, here. About, about your vision, and I just pray that, you know, many people, I pray, everyone God has ordained will come for the event, Amen. but about your vision or the dream you had, it's just very evident how, you know, there are many destinies out there that need to be awakened. And that's what, you know, the Lord is calling you to. Um, maybe my last words, because it's as if I'm being reminded that I haven't said it. I've been asked the question often. Um, well, I've left my partner. We have divorced. It's mm. final. Um, is God happy with me? Mm. Have I not failed God? And... Um, I want you to know that there is no unforgive even if divorce was a sin the bible has told us that there's no unforgivable sin the lord mm. loves you the lord still has assignments for you your destiny still matters to him and i want you to know that you can live again you can have what you did not have before yes yes the lord can usher you into the fullness of what marriage is Yes, and give you another chance. And he's the God of many chances. I yes. am here. I am a testifier. So please go out and live again. Your children are waiting oh, on you. Your children yes. need you to live again. They the next door neighbor that has always known your story needs you to live again so that they can see what the hand of God can do. That's oh. really what my life is about. That's it. That you say, ah, oh, that can happen. Yes. Oh, wow. So then God can do it for me. Yep. Yes. And that's it. And your it's always God. It must always. You're living again. Must always point to God. Always, That's something to also always see. point to God. And if yes. you must always it's point to God. Night. Wow! <laughs> oh my goodness! Amazing, amazing night. I gotta let you go now. I gotta let you go now. I mean, it's been so wholesome. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your night. Oh wow! Woo! Take care. It's time to live again. Good. I don't know. I don't know what else to say after this. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I don't know. I just feel like what God has done here tonight is, is so powerful. There were layers upon layers. Thank you, Leticia. Thank you, Leticia. Please register for the Live Again Outreach. Link in my bio to read more about it. And this is a work God has called me to do this year for women. A lot of women are going through a lot, but many of them are just packaging and hiding and, 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 and making it look like, oh, I'm okay. And some are actually okay. Some are okay, but there are things that the enemy has already kept as seeds to use. Things that happened when they were children, defining experiences that happened that they just kept aside and they just said, you know what, let me just keep it first. And that thing is something that the enemy can use to, 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 to keep them stuck and keep them stagnant. If you've been listening to us, you've been listening to me, I think what God wants you to know is that there is a life he has predestined for you. And that life might not be the life that you are currently living. He wants you to live again. He wants you to move from the life you're currently living to the life he has predestined for you. And this is why you need to attend the Live Again Outreach. Link is in my bio. It's liveagain.com.ng slash outreach. Share this video with a woman that you feel might be blessed by this. Share the link for the Live Again Outreach with someone that you feel needs to be there. It's really a beautiful time of worship, but also um, dealing with emotional healing and emotional wounds and baggages and weights and, and, and bitterness and unforgiveness. And also helping you deal with mental strongholds that may have stopped you from living again or living the life that God has predestined for you to live. And then going into helping you fix your self-esteem, fixing your self-confidence and seeing yourself as a high-value woman and bringing out that value for you to see. And then, of course, we're giving out grants to 20 women for their business. We're giving out 200,000 naira to a mother. We're giving out a free business name registration to one mother. We're giving out a lot of things. There is free massage therapy. Oriki is sponsoring 40 women on the massage therapy for free. And then we also have um, free hairstyling, free make makeup, 
free photo shoots, free fashion styling. It's, it's a feast we're having. We're going to come into the Live Again Outreach and allow God to just open us up to ourselves and allow God to heal us. And then we're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be a DJ. We're going to have a party. But the thing is, it's a holistic event that deals with holistic well-being. So when you come for the Live Again Outreach, you will be healed from the inside out. You will begin to live the way God ordained you to live from the inside out, not from the outside in, where you're just doing things to, to cover up or doing things to doing things to make it look like you're okay. God wants you to be okay. God wants you to be really, really okay. And there is a life abundantly that God has planned. And that's what the Live Again Outreach is about. Please register. It's liveagain.com.ng slash um, um, outreach. Or you can use bit.ly slash outreach. But however, whichever one you want to use, make sure you register for the Live Again Outreach. It is time. It is time. This is not the kind of year where you just say, oh, let, let me just exist. If you exist this year, chances are that you will exist for the rest of the decade. Yes. Because this year is very important. This year is so critical. This year is like the main year. The main year that will precede the other years. So even if you've not been, been truly living before now, this is one year you cannot afford not to truly live. And by truly live, I mean live the life that God ordained, God planned for you to live before time, before now, before you even knew yourself, before your parents knew you, before you made that mistake, before you met that person, before you started working in that company, before you started that business, there is a life God has ordained before you became a mother. Because many mothers are just saying, you know what, let me just settle here. You don't understand. Being a mother is a lot of work. I cannot do anything else. Please, 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 please. I'm going through a lot. Well, the truth is that, like, like Jacqueline said, live again for your children. I, I don't when people say, oh because of my children that's why i'm existing i asked them so um what if you truly live because of your children what if your children should be the reason why you truly live and that's what we should start thinking about if you're a mother listening to me be the mother that your your children will say ah my mother truly lived she did not exist and because she truly lived i have the audacity to live i always say that my, my grandchildren will talk about me and they will say ah any for me that our grandmama any for me ah that woman she lived again. She's an inspiration. Why? Because I did not allow my pain bury me. I did not allow what I went through to bury me. I took it to God and said, God, take this pain, take this mess, take this mistake and use it for your glory. And today the work I'm doing helping women live again came out of my pain. I'm grateful for my pain. But the reason why I'm, I'm able to do this is because I didn't, I didn't go and take my pain and, 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 and hold the pain and say, I'm not letting you go because I wanted to stay with that pain or because it was difficult for me to let go of the pain. It's always difficult to let go of the pain. Living again is difficult. In fact, it's difficult to show up, you know, to live the life that God has called you to live. There are obstacles on the path. I'm not even going to make it sound easy. There are. But the thing is, if you are able to pay the price, it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. Because where you are currently might look like the best, but there is a best God has prepared. Example, Joseph and Potiphar's wife, and then Joseph and the throne. Example, Esther as queen, and Esther as the one who God used to deliver the children of Israel. So there is a plan God has for you, and that's where and why living again is important. It's very, very important, because God wants you to live again. I'm going to leave you now. We're going to have another Live Again series in the next one. So look out for the next one. But one thing you need to know is that God wants you to live again. If you were blessed by this and you want, you have something that jumps at you and you would like to share, please drop it in the comments and I'll give you a shout out. But if you have not registered for the Live Again Outreach, please register. Share with someone. There are many women going through things. They won't tell you. They, don't, they may not look like it because many times we're very good at, look at this wig I'm wearing. You won't know what I went through today. I mean, if you look at me, you're like, ah, she's looking very fine. Ah, ah, gay, gay. Look at makeup on fleek. Although now the makeup is now uh -huh, because it's been since morning. However, I, 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 I keep showing up. I show up because I know that lives are connected to me. I show up because I know that this is the life God has called me to live. It wasn't the life I planned for myself. I'm a civil engineer. I read engineering. I had other plans for my life. I was, you know, doing my own thing when God... I heard live again for the very first time. Live again. What is live again? What does it mean? What does it mean? I've, I've never heard the word before, right? 
So this is the work God has called me to do. And it's because there are women that, that, that need to live again. And the reason I did not die in that abuse I was going through, the reason I did not die in that pain and in that you know, situation that should have claimed my life, honestly. <laughs> ah, I went through a lot. There was one day I was telling a friend of mine that I even had a six o'clock coffee. Yes, six o'clock coffee. If I came back after six o'clock, I would be locked out of the house. I've slept on the balcony before. There's a lot, a lot. But I thank God that that which the enemy used or did to, to, to just, you know, cause me to be on standstill, like paused. You know when they say somebody paused, paused a person. Yeah. What the enemy did to pause me was what God used to say, no, you don't determine the end of our life. I do. And the reason that happened was because I went to God and surrendered. I said, Lord, I surrender to you. I, I literally just, you know what, I align. And today, I'm a woman living again and helping others live again. But you too can live again. If I can live again, you can. God doesn't want you to be camouflaging and covering up. And, you know, there's a glow that comes upon you when you begin to live. That is not the kind of glow that happens when you're merely existing and trying to patch things up right even if it looks like you're looking good on the outside there is a way god wants you to really look and really live that you won't be doing too much but you'll just be glowing that's what happens when you begin to truly live and not merely exist i gotta leave you now and i'm gonna see you in the next one bye enjoy your day enjoy your nights bye bye